Hey guys, welcome back to Chaos Core Tech. My name's Garrett, and today is part two of the Magnemite build. So if you've not seen part one, make sure you do that. Uh, check the little eye up in the corner because that will be essential to what we are doing today. And basically in that video, we took reference images from Magnemite and kind of planned out what we wanna do here. So what we're gonna be doing in this video is actually modeling Magnemite. Now, whenever I approach a model, um, you always wanna work outside in. And what I mean by that is focus on the big features. So um, if you can identify any shapes or anything like that, um, you basically just want to get the main shape of it there and then move on to working on the details. And I found that that really helps because sometimes you can get really bogged down in the details. Um, and, you know, while those details might look really good in the end, you pull out to the bigger picture and notice that something um, just does not look right at all. And that's because you haven't spent the time necessary to get the shape there. And once the details are on, it becomes quite a bit harder to adjust those shapes. Now luckily Magnemite is very simple and he's made mostly out of geometric shapes so um, we won't have to do any forms or anything here and we can create him mostly from a sketch. So let's just jump in and do this. So immediately what we're going to do is create a sketch and I'm just going to put it on the ground plane here. And then we'll start with the most obvious feature and that is the um, sphere that is his body. So I'm just going to create a circle hit C, having models centered like this um, can really help sometimes. And I want this to be 180 millimeters in diameter. And that's because I want this to be big and I know that that will fit on my printer, but um, there's not much more room after that. And now I want the sphere of Magnemite to be hollow. So I'm gonna put another inner ring in there. And um, for that one, I am going to just drag it out here to a nondescript place. Now I'm gonna hit the D key, which is the sketch dimension key. You can also find it under the sketch menu down here. And that basically allows us to um, manually put in uh, what we wanna do here. And so I want the shell to be eight millimeters thick. So I'm gonna hit D. I'm gonna select this inner ring and then this outer ring. Go right there and hit eight. And now you can see that it brought the inner ring um, out to be big enough to be eight less than this one out here. And now we're actually gonna be revolving this out. So I'm gonna just gonna stick a line right down the middle. And that basically acts as a line of symmetry and um, it will be the middle of the model. And since Magnemite is so simple, really the only other features on this ball are um, his eyeballs. So I'll just hit C again for another circle, go to the middle. And this one, I actually want to be 90. And you can grab these and move them out of the way so you can actually see what you're doing. Um, and then he just needs the pupil, so I'm gonna hit C again, and this one needs to be 10. Now, you may be wondering how I arrived at these numbers. Um, and really, these are less important, especially something that's um, as simple as this, because at any point, I can come back in and adjust these um, to make it look right. And really, how I determine these numbers is um, I just look at it proportionally. So if I bring up the picture of Magnemite here, I can kind of walk you through how I determine the sizes of things. So I start with this main body because that's obviously the biggest piece of Magnemite. And as I explained earlier, I wanted that to fit on my bed, but still be pretty big. So I knew that that was 180 right out of the gate. And I just determine everything else proportional to that. So like this eyeball, um, and again, this is something that varies between pictures of Magnemite, but ultimately it looked like it was about half of the diameter of the ball. And so as you can see down here, it is 90 where the outer shell is 180. And then you can just kind of feel out um, the pupil there. It's tiny. Um, and if you end up making it too small or too big later, just come in and adjust it. Small details like that are very easy to adjust in Fusion 360. Now we have the main body, so let's move on to the magnets here. And um, again, proportional. So these magnets are definitely smaller than the main ball, but it looks like from top to bottom here, they are just slightly bigger than this eye. So that's what I'm gonna do. Um, we picked 90 for this. Um, let's just go 110 for the magnet size, and that should get us pretty close. And now you may be wondering how to get this magnet shape, um, and that's actually very simple too, because you can break it up into um, smaller geometrical shapes. So really what this is, is it's just a circle with a rectangle. And then, um, you know, that repeated on the inside to cut it out there. Um, and if that doesn't make sense, I'll show you what I mean. So if you hit C, that gives you the circle tool, but that is a center circle. And that's hard to line up 
over here. So what we're actually going to do is come up to sketch, go to circle, and we're going to do a two point circle. And then that will allow us to click right here where we know we want one of the ends to be, drag it out straight, and right there we're at 110. So I'll go ahead and click, and that will solidify a circle right there. And then we can go ahead and put a line directly through the center of this circle here. And um, if you want an easy way to line things up, if you hover over the point you want to line it up to, like the center right here, you can actually drag down and um, it'll put a blue line as long as you're lined up with that and it'll help snap to it. So I'll just do this and we can see, or hit the little check there, you can see that we're still perfectly through that. So from here, we'll just create a rectangle. And um, let's go, I think that looks about right. So we'll just go 75. So I'll just check right there and then I will do the same down here. 75 and then just connect the two. And now you can delete this um, line if you want to, you can keep it, I'm gonna go ahead and delete it. And now you can see we've got the sort of outside shape of the magnet. Now we just need it on the inside. So I'm just gonna replicate these shapes. So I'll create another circle, I can go a center circle this time. And let's see, so it's at 110. Let's try, that's 90. 70, now, how thick do I want this? So I'm just gonna do that. Okay, so I'll hit D, select the inner circle, then the outer circle. Um, let's see, how does 20 look? Um, that's too thin, let's try 30. Yeah, I think that, that'd work. Then we can just take the lines, come up from there, and then go straight over. Okay, so there we have the basic, um, horseshoe type shape of the magnet. And then the only other detail on the magnets are these end pieces here. And as you can see, these ones even look a little disproportionate on how big they actually are. Um, and I prefer the magnemites where these are a little bit shorter. So um, let's add those in right now. So I'm gonna hit the L key for line. And then I'm just gonna come over here and create a line. And um, doesn't matter where right now, because then we can come in with D hit that, come over, and then um, adjust it up right here. Uh, maybe 14. Okay, yeah, I'm gonna go with 14. And then I will do the same down here. And again, you can just line that up. Okay, but now we really need to think about how these are gonna be separated, because right now, they butt right up against each other, and unless I make one physically a different height, um, then you're not going to notice that when you print it because it's just going to meld together and there'll be no separation. And this is one of those things that I do to try to make life a little bit easier on my wife because you can see really well on this picture here that um, there is no physical separation there. The uh, difference is purely in color and it would most likely be a completely smooth transition on the real Magnemite. But in order to make that detail stand out in 3D prints, which is something that I prefer to do, um, because it gives you two real benefits. One, you can see it on the print. So if someone chooses not to color it, that detail will still be there. And two, it provides a guideline for the painter. Um, and as I said before, I really try to make um, life as easy as possible on my wife, um, since she's so nice to help me with this stuff anyway. So what I'm gonna do is just put a really small little indention there. And I'm gonna do the same thing with the dimensions here. And for this one, I'm just gonna make it one millimeter because that is something that will print well, um, but it's not big enough to really cause alarm. And then I will do the same down here just by dragging from that point. Now we can make this little thing a different height and it'll just provide a little bit of separation, but we also need to do that on the top as well. And on this side, just so we get it all the way around. And if that doesn't make 100% sense, you'll see what I mean when we extrude this in just a bit. Okay, so that should give us um, the full magnet. And we don't need to create it on the other side because once we extrude this into a full object and have everything done, we can just mirror it. So that's really nice. Okay, so the really the only thing left is the screw. Um, and now I'm actually gonna drag that down to be right there so it's out of our way. Um, the screws on the top and when I was actually creating the model beforehand um, I fidgeted with this a lot to try and get it to look right But I ended up writing down what I use just because I want to take the time to try and figure it out again here 
but um, basically just keep messing with it until you think it looks right to you. So I'm gonna be revolving this one as well. So I will just start with the line in the middle and it looks like I made this um, 60. And then I made this um, 10 wide, so it'll be 20 in diameter. And I'm just gonna bring it down a little bit into uh, Magnemite here. And then the top part of the screw is a pretty interesting shape, but I just started with a rectangle to give us the guidelines and then I add in the curves um, afterwards. So I made this one, uh, looks like 25. And then it was um, 15 tall. And now we can add in the curve. So I'm gonna come up here to the spline tool, start in this top corner, and um, sort of just start coming over with this curve um, down to the bottom corner, creating what looks like a screw top. And then I wanted a little bit of a curve on the bottom as well. But this one um, be a lot less dramatic. Okay, and then I think the last detail was just the um, little slots in the top of the screw here. And for that, I'm just gonna go with rectangles as well. Over here, we'll make this 10. And then I will come over 15, because that looks like a pretty good spot. So that will be the long way from our view. And then the one that's uh, basically on par with our view, create a line here. And then we'll do a sketch dimension. And I'm gonna make that 2.5. And we don't really need to worry about the bottom screws because we'll just take this top screw once it's all together and scale them down a bit and position them. But for all intents and purposes, um, I think this will be the final sketch. Um, and it looks like I am already running long on this video. So I am going to actually stop this video here and then we'll actually start modeling in the next video. But I hope that you guys can kind of see um, where I'm going with this. And hopefully the gears start turning in your head. Um, of how you can use this to create something that you've been wanting to create. Okay guys, well I really hope that was helpful. Um, the next part of this should be coming out soon, probably early next week. So make sure you stick around for that. Um, make sure you like this if you thought it was a good video. Get subscribed if you're not already. And then that's all for me guys. I'll see you next time.